We're going to do what I did before and just use these pebbles here. Oh, wow, guys. What do you say? And you're going to be doing well in no time at all. There she goes. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Does that look insane? I want to put the valley at the back just to see if I like it or not, really. It's got some good pace. Look at that. Welcome back to the vlog, guys. So behind me is a brand new aquarium set up. I mean, it's not finished. I've just done the, the hardscape at the moment. So in this video, we're going to be planting it all. Now, it's a very, very simple scape, but that's because I want to try and simulate something that replicates the natural environment, well, as close to as I can with what I've got, anyway, of the fish that are going in there, the panda gar and the hillstream loaches. Apparently, they're Borneo suckers or some sort of variety. I don't really know. Let's just call them hillstream loaches. It's easier and they look like that anyway. <laughs> but yeah, I'm really pleased with how it's turned out so far. We added those little sticks for detail as well on the top because quite often in a river system, you'll see that when you like bits getting caught everywhere. But predominantly it's just stones and not a lot of wood. I did that on purpose. I think that can best replicate a fast flowing river then. So yeah, anyway, that is the main setup. So you can see what I'm going for, hopefully. So behind there's the gap. Now the new power heads arrived actually, and I'm going to be putting that in this corner back here and that's going to send the flow all the way down that back area and then all the way here into the foreground as well and then i'll just sort of go up this ramp <laughs> or not i don't know and just swoop all the way back and then just continue doing that and that should look so cool and i think the fish are going to really really like it as well right so i've actually got a load of plants down here that we can use i took a load of them out to use them in the buddha tank and also i did take a load out of this tank as well but we've had more arrive so that's brilliant but a lot of the plants that we've got here aren't really going to work so for instance, I think I can get away the Hajikotl Japan. That's going to work really well, so I'm going to reuse that. There's some Spiral Val there. That will work really well. And I've also got in the back there some Crypt Spiralis, which is actually sort of very species-specific and very much like the environment that these fish are from as well. Asia is what I'm trying to say. But yeah, I mean, I've got the Val here as well. Now, Val is not specific to Asia. It's a South American plant, but I don't think we should worry about things like that too much in our home aquariums. If you're in like a museum or creating like a big aquarium for the public, I think you should do. You should try and keep it as specific as you can. But, you know, for entertainment purposes and creation, I'm gonna I'm gonna use some of it. And it looks super healthy, didn't it? Look at that Val there. Look how green it is. <laughs> and up in this dirty storage tank up here, we've got some really nice Anubius as well and some mosses that we can use. And it Attach onto the rocks. Click subscribe. Right, so as I think you can see, we've got some Anubius Petite there. I'm trying to keep it small because obviously it's a small tank, so we don't want big, big leaves taking over and just looking out of place. So yeah, for a sense of scale, that pebble you can see there, I mean, that's pretty much the size of one of those plants. So I just think it would work really well just to keep everything small, the moss is small and all that. It's just going to look so good. But there is one Anubius that I've got that's much bigger, and I've got a plan for that later on. So it looks like this build is definitely going to be another need for the Cyanoacrylate Super Glue gel the gel form is best for this kind of job guys now remember i said to you before it's completely fish and plant safe it dries and hurts are all good now the, the you've got two options really you could cram it into gaps all the anubius and the java fern and all that you could cram them into gaps but i'm going for super fast flow remember this isn't going to be a normal tank if i didn't glue them down i've got a feeling i'll come in tomorrow or the next day or whenever and it would just be like just swirls of floating anubius and different plants <laughs> which would be really annoying wouldn't it So yeah, I'm going to do what I did before and just use these pebbles here and just glue the Anubias to those and I can put those in the tank wherever I want them to go. And voila, there we have it. So now, like I say, the beauty of having all these Anubias on these little stones is that if they don't like the position they're in, we can just easily move them. For example, I've had plants before that I've placed, say, just for example, like there, and it didn't work. I, okay, it, they didn't grow, they didn't change, they didn't thrive at all, they were surviving, that's it. And then all I've done is take the same plant and moved it, say, over there, and, oh, whoops. And anyway, and it took off, like literally 
it could be to do with lighting, shading, loads of different factors. But I just find like placing plants like these, these are epiphyte plants for those who don't know. They don't need to be planted in soil. They can just attach to sort of the decor and then they pull nutrients from the water column through all those roots that you can see down in there. So why attach them to something permanently if you can move them if you need to, you might want to change the whole look of your scape at some point, which means you can easily do that if you do it like this. Just my preference and how I like to do things. And as always guys, make sure you're spraying everything down regularly because these small plants will dry up quick. Anubius is quite forgiving, but you just need to stay on top of it. Oh wow, that's actually the first time I've seen all these rocks with water on as well. It looks really, really good, so natural. Uh, now I've got to clean all the front glass. Do you remember me guys saying to you I had a larger Anubius, this one here, this is just Anubius nanobarteri. <laughs> anyway, I had a plan to use it to block a certain area to make sure the water flow goes in the right direction. Yeah, this is the area I was planning on, see? Just push it nicely between there somehow or other. <laughs> Go on then, lock it in. All these little twigs actually will, oh, I've just broke a leaf. Nothing more annoying. Right, there we go, that'll sit nicely in there and that'll just make sure that the water keeps going this way. I might fill out another one here. This will also grow immersed as well because this plant in the wild lives on sort of like the border between the water line and the river bank. So it can grow underwater or above. So I think that's quite good actually. We're simulating realism. Simul, you know what I mean. Oh, wow guys, what do you say? I think that's looking insanely good. Really, really happy with how that's turning out so far. Well, we need to add some details of moss. I don't want to go silly with this one because moss can just get out of control. It's supposed to be slow growing, but before you know it, you turn around and your whole scape's covered in moss. So at the moment, I've got a tank that's growing moss really, really well, and I want to use that. Right, so this is what I'm talking about, this moss here. This is Taiwan, Taiwan moss, yeah. And it's really, really nice, really triangular shaped. And it's my favorite moss, so that's why I really want to use it again. Now the lighting in here is a little bit sort of low. <laughs> and that's because of this lot. From this angle, it doesn't look too bad, does it? You come up, that is a lot of red root floaters. Look at all the flowers on them as well. Is it picking them up? It should be. There's like flowers on top of everything. Yeah, but we're not here for those. Maybe we'll use some of them. No, we won't be able to use those because they'll just sort of just get destroyed in that high flow. But we could definitely use the moss. It needs a trim back anyway, so I'm going to hack it right, right back. And just, yeah, we've got loads to use then. Just look at this beautiful female mano shrimp full full of egg oh wait <laughs> full of eggs on her um, unfortunately a mano shrimp babies or shrimplets they don't survive in fresh water they need like a brackish water to survive so none of those will sadly be born It'd be so cool if I could set up something to be able to breed them but apparently it's like nigh on impossible never mind maybe one day maybe we can look into that more one day a mano shrimp are great at keeping everything clean I added 10 to this tank and as soon as I did, I came down the next day that all the diatom algae was gone and I haven't seen any algae in there ever since. So yeah, if you're struggling, get yourself 10 Amano shrimp for a 60 centimeter or two foot aquarium and you're gonna be doing well in no time at all. There she goes. <laughs> There we go. I don't want to spoil the look, so I don't want to do any more than that. Let's just keep it minimal, and I think that's just adding nice little textures and details dotted around, but it doesn't take away from the overall stony look. I think it looks great, doesn't it? I mean, how good does all of that look? I'm really, really liking it.
Right guys, top tip for you, if you get to the stage where we're at now and you need to do something, like for instance, I wanna go and have some breakfast now, it's very early, I'm very hungry. What you can do is grab trusty old paper towel, this is the most used thing in my fish room, and just take off shred shreds of it, shreds or pieces, whatever, take them off, and then you can just put them on top and spray them down. I've done that overnight before and it's been no problem at all, especially plants like Anubias, mosses, Java ferns, that sort of thing. They can last quite a while with just some wet paper on top. So I think now's gonna be a really good time to fill the tank up with water. We can then get like longer plants in like the valve that we we're talking about. And also we can fit our power head or, or wave maker that's gonna sit right in that back corner about there and then that should send all that water really fast down. it's not massively powerful but it's a small tank so it's probably going to seem that way it's variable i can control the speed and everything anyway so yeah let's just fill it up and then we can fiddle around with it Oh my goodness, does that look insane or what? I love it. So you've got underwater, you've got above the water. There's a bit of scum all on the top at the moment, but that'll come off in no time. Right, what do we say we get the filter fit so we can get that water crystal clear? There we go, the flow is up and running. You can see all the sort of surface scum. Now this is why I wanted to get another power filter for it because that's not a fast flowing river tank, is it? <laughs> so let's get that fitted now. Again, like I said, it's gonna go in this back corner, shoot all the way down and then just hit this side here and twist to the foreground as well. I mean, it's probably gonna stir that sand all up. So I might have to just put some more of that coarser gravel in the foreground. That's okay, that'll look good as well. Okay, cool. The wave maker is fitted. Well, I say wave maker, like wave makers are, tend to be for sort of marine because obviously the flow pattern is like on, off, on, off, like a wave coming in, going out. We're doing a river, so I won't have it as a wave maker, just have it as a power head, like a constant supply of the same amount of power. But before I put that on, I just want to put the valve in at the back just to see if I like it or not really. It might not look right. It might be too much. This might be perfect, but you've got to try things and just have a look and see. I'm hoping to put it in the background and just have it sort of swoop round to the front, like about this far in, and that's about it. So it doesn't distract from this jungly style view that we've got here, which looks fantastic. Water's a bit murky, but we can sort that in a minute with API AccuClear. Yeah, let's get that valve in. Oh, I absolutely love it, guys. So look, I'll put Val just in this corner so a little bit of it tapes around to the front, but not very much. And then obviously, as you can see around the back here, there's there's loads of it, and that's gonna be like maybe a, a place that the fish feel really comfortable. But you know, we'll see them around both areas. They like to sort of travel and explore. And then down in this front corner here, I've put some of the runners. I don't know if the camera's gonna pick it up. Yeah, there we go. Look, some of the runners right in the center of the screen there. They'll probably grow and then eventually go all the way around the back as well. But I think it's now time to put on that power head and let's just take it for a spin. I don't know. <laughs> Sorry guys, I'm way too excited. Oh guys, that's working just as expected. We've got some good pace. Look at that flow just spinning around. I mean, it's, it's faster than it looks. If we can focus in on just the particles. Yeah, there we go. Look, now you can see the particles all moving, the bits in, still floating in the water, a random bit of val. <laughs> but yeah, look, over here at the end, the val is doing exactly what I wanted, just swooping around. Again, like I said, I don't want this going crazy fast. I want the fish to be able to enjoy it, but there's some proper flow going on there and they should really enjoy it. I mean, especially down the back end. If I bring you up the topper, you can see how much flow is just flying down the back there. The wave maker is generating quite a lot of flow in that back area, so they're gonna have super fast flow back there. 
but as they come into the foreground it can be a little bit more steady for them which is what you want you want to let them have both options don't we we don't want them to get too tired do the fish get tired i mean those fish probably don't they're used to that environment oh but i'm so pleased with how that's turned out guys i think that looks fantastic and it's just the look i was going for as well There we have it, the final result. Like I say, I'm really pleased with it, but I'm gonna leave it now for a few weeks just so that it can get like a nice biofilm on everything because the whole tank is brand new. I even cleaned out all the filtration system because the filter was sat for a while, so I didn't have anything to put it in. But we'll start again fresh. There's no problem with that at all. It will be up and running in no time. And then we can get in these little blighters. Here they are, and I cannot wait to get them into the tank. It's, they're gonna look so good in there, aren't they? So we've got the... Uh, the mini stingray on the back there. I know, I know, it's not a stingray, it's a hillstream loach. Sorry, Borneo suck up the same thing. It's a hillstream loach. Oh, look, down the bottom, Panagara. Look at that, they're so cool. Just their little behavior is brilliant. They're always active. They're such an active fish. Oh, they've gone. But yeah, can't wait to get these into that tank where they can really, really enjoy that flow. Well, that is the end of the vlog, guys. So do me a favor. If you've liked this one, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, the notification bell, all those things, and I will see you on the next one.